Hey, boy. What are you doing? Oh, good morning. You want to say hello to the camera? Hello. Hello. Everybody, happy holiday, happy holiday season. season! Past couple of weeks we have been out here in Caracas just house and dog sitting for our parents. Yeah, but luckily they're finally back so yes. that means we can go explore some of this area and make the most of it. Yeah, today we are going to go check out a new lavender farm that's just opened up to the public recently. And then... We're also going to go to Monaco Heads which has yeah. got a nice lighthouse. Never been out that area so that should be interesting to see. But first, feeling kind of hungry so I think we need to go find ourselves some food. Yeah, we're going to head over to the general store first. a very short drive but we've arrived here and we are at the general store and cafe so Caracas is quite a rural area hence all this yeah, farmland. Lots of farmland everywhere <laughs> well I found a bacon crumb chicken panini chicken brie panini so cheese Have a look at that Ooh, that looks really good yes I decided we're gonna be out all day and need a lot of food <laughs> So I was thinking about ordering something from the menu, but then I saw this bacon and egg roll and it looked mean as... Cabinet food looks really good at Yeah, it does look really, really good. I mean, look at this thing. Ooh. In case you're wondering, this place is called the General Store because it does double up as a general store as well as a cafe, which is uh, pretty cool. That's the first time I think I've seen that. And uh, well, a lot of the rural places here in New Zealand do have that, but in the like small city areas, you don't really see that so much. Yeah, they had milkshakes on the menu and uh, my parents used to have a takeaway like 30 years ago and I'm pretty sure we had the exact same packaging so some things seem this to never change. very iconic. <laughs> but New Zealand yes. milkshakes come in these giraffe bottles. <laughs> some flavours are just so nostalgic and that is one of them. Vanilla milkshake, just can't really go wrong with that. <laughs> So we got our paninis toasted and you can see my melted cheese now. Oh yeah. And the chicken pieces look like chicken nuggets which is probably why I got attracted to it at the start. That is very nice. You've got the yummy bacon taste as well that's in there. The very creamy cheesy goodness. That chicken is really good too and that nice warm bread. I think this is going to set us up for a good day. As soon as you pick this thing up, you can feel that there's some substantial weight to it, which yes, is Yes, that's a good word. Good. <laughs> substantial. Let's have a bite. Mm. I heard a crunch as well. Mm. There's a bunch of cheese that's baked right into the bread. Lots of eggs, lots of bacon. Simple, but delicious. It's going to give us lots of energy for the rest of the day now. Yeah. Those were some pretty solid sandwiches. Paninis. Pretty delicious. <laughs> Paninis or yeah. sandwiches? Paninis. Okay, well, we're heading over to um, the lavender farm now. So yes. let's go. We're here now at CCT Lavender Estate. It's only like what four, four minute drive? Yeah, four five minute drive away from where we were just before. And we only found out about this place because of our good friend Diana. So thanks, Diana. It seems like they only just recently opened, maybe like in late November, that kind of period or something. At the moment, it is completely free, no entry fees during the summer period. And they're open every day except for Mondays, but also 25th, 26th December, and 1st and 2nd January. So to get to the lookout point for the lavenders, apparently we just come on the stony path through the cafe area. Yeah, and uh, we weren't able to see any proper lavender farm yeah. lavenders in the Wanaka place. So uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, this time it will be all good. Yeah, we were too early last time when we were in Wanaka. Ooh, I can see some purple. Yeah, 
yes, there are waves of purple. It's really pretty. Looks like we're in luck. This place is pretty nice, huh, bud? It is so beautiful. And I love that we basically have the whole place to ourselves right now. We're here on a Tuesday. It's mid-December. I think it's also because, you know, the place has only recently opened, so not many Aucklanders would even know about it either. Yeah, secret spot. Secret spot. <laughs> we also ran into a couple of our viewers before, which was really cool. So hello again, Ellen and friends. But yeah, what a gorgeous place, eh? It smells really nice too. And there's a lot of lavenders at this farm here. Yeah. I think uh, we've been to a few now, Yen and I, and I reckon this is probably the biggest lavender farm itself for that purpose. But yeah, if you're coming here for photos, which I imagine a lot of you are, then uh, it's probably good to think a little bit ahead, choose the right lane, and uh, think about the angles of your shots and all that kind of jazz. Not that I'm an expert or anything, but uh, just a little bit of advice for you. Yeah, otherwise you get stuck in these lanes. Yeah, and there's no hopping over <laughs> yeah, the way later. Right. Don't want to damage any of the lavenders. I have no idea how long we spent there. About like ages. <laughs> Probably, because we were trying to take lots of photos and that sort of thing with the thumbnail, Instagram, you know, all of that. But right now we are headed over to the Monaco Heads Lighthouse. I think it's about an hour's drive away. An hour and four minutes, exactly. Oh wow, yeah, okay, not, not too bad. <laughs> we better head on now. over the side of the road guys so that Peter could take a nap. <laughs> After maybe like 15-ish minutes, guess who's awake? <laughs> oh man guys, that was so bad. I got like really struck with a massive nap attack. <laughs> yeah. But uh, living out here in Caracas, the um, hay fever has been horrible because of, uh, I don't know, maybe just the rural grass or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Peter's hay fever has been in overdrive and I've got some pills that are really good antihistamines but it makes him sleepy for some reason. <laughs> and we're back on track now and we should be there in another 20 minutes. <laughs> Bit of a drive later and we finally can see, well actually we can see the lighthouse right over there. We can indeed. I am such a noob though, I completely forgot to bring my hoodie and I even purposely left it out so that I would take it yeah. because it does get very cold here. I mean you're looking out at the oceans from this area so it is windy and a little chilly even though it's a beautiful summer day. <laughs> it is. Looking forward to the walk though? Should we head out? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, look what this one's found. <laughs> Arr! Is that the sound a sailor makes? Woo! <laughs> Is that the sound a lady makes? <laughs> I don't know what a lighthouse makes. <laughs> Close enough, I think. So yeah, you got the car park over there, and this part going up to the lighthouse, you gotta do it by foot. No way, this is so cool. You can actually go inside this lighthouse. Yeah, that's right. This Monaco Heads lighthouse is one of the few publicly accessible lighthouses in New Zealand. It's in fact only the second lighthouse that we've been to, the first one being Cape Ranga, of course. Now this one, you can actually go upstairs to take a look at that view, but even down here, you've got an amazing view already. Let's have a look around here first. We'll okay. save the best for last. <laughs> You've got one of these sign boards here, which is awesome because it lists out all the different interest points, which helps people like Peter and I who've got pretty shocking geography, eh? Yeah, we're very challenged in that but department. Yeah, <laughs> just out that way is the Waitakere Rangers, which we've been to, you might have seen in a couple of vlogs back. So it's really cool to be able to see it from this side instead. It is free entry to this place, but you can also donate to help with the maintenance and upkeep of the lighthouse grounds. But thankfully, I got a note so you can do our donation. Ooh, so that's what it looks like inside a lighthouse. 
Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. I've never been on one of these before. I just went outside for a quick peek and it looks absolutely stunning. So I'm gonna show you guys the view from up here. It looks way better than when we were down there. Ah, nice. Let's go. Ooh, tiny door. Wow. What do you reckon, bud? It is pretty amazing up here. You get to walk around this whole top part. So it's a 360 view again of the beautiful rolling farmlands and the ocean. It is a little chilly, but it's not as bad as I was expecting. So it's okay that I don't have my hoodie. What do you reckon lighthouse keepers would do up here? They have to look out, right? For ships and beacon them in. I don't know actually. <laughs> Someone please educate us. <laughs> While we were coming here, I saw this other point that looks like you can go up as well. So we're just going to go up there. Might be a different view, maybe. I'm not sure. We'll find we'll out. We'll find out soon. <laughs> so it doesn't look like you get too much more of a view out here, right? Well, you do get a little peek over that way. That's quite nice, but it is very difficult to beat the view from the top of the lighthouse. So I'll give you guys a couple of facts in the meantime, though. The Manukau Heads Lighthouse has been standing there for over 133 years. It sits on top of the Afitu Peninsula here and the gates are open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily. So what did you find over here, bud? A history lesson. So this signal platform here faces the treacherous Manukau Bar and that is the site of New Zealand's worst maritime disaster and shipwreck, the HMS Orpheus, where very sadly 189 men lost their lives. So only 69 men survived that shipwreck, but to date, that is the worst one in New Zealand history. We're back out here in Karaka, and this is where I was taking Chocho, mum and dad's dog, for a walk every single day. Yeah, and before we wrap up this video, we wanted to say a huge special thank you to two of our amazing supporters, that's Amber and Luke Backus. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, thank you so much for always watching our videos. We wish you the best of luck coming to New Zealand, hopefully next year with your little ones. Fingers crossed. <laughs> we hope you'll love it here. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please do give us those likes, subscribe if you haven't already, and drop us a comment. We'd love hearing from you, and we will catch you on the next one. Next time. Catch up. See ya.